<laughs> okay, let's get started again. So, before I continue uh, moving on, I need to check one thing. How are we doing English-wise? How many people are following 100%? 100% わかってるっていう人っていうの日本語で聞いてなかったら言うけど、ちょっと正直の言い方、もし必要だったら、いつもやるんですけど、僕、パペルと思って、持ってきて、英語と日本語、日本語喋って、英語で喋ってるみ
and the eye of your distress to work for your soul or life cycle of this project. So that's the mind. So yes, maybe my son. Yeah. He's really modest, but this HTV transfer, the HTV HD, transfer vehicle is the, the first, the world first unmanned vehicle went to ISS. So he designed the safety system for this vehicle. So that's great entrepreneurial mindset. And just last night, I came up from Japan. So, please enjoy the day. Okay, thank you. Okay, hi, it's, it's me again. You can just call me Kane. My real name is Kananori, but it's really hard to pronounce. It's first four letters, Kane. I studied in the United States for um, um, several years, and I, I actually lived in the United States for seven or eight years. And um, I went to the University of Minnesota. Who knows this school? You do. You went there. Yeah. Yes, it's a cold place, minus 30 degrees in the winter. So ice hockey was the major sport there. So that's what I used to play. And after that, I got my first career as an engineer in Honda R&D. And I was at, at the Motorcycle R&D Center. And I first started out as a mechanical designer for engines. So uh, who ride motorcycles? Oh no. <laughs> Again, OK, it happens a lot here. But. So I was an engine designer for a big motorcycles, um, such as um, 1300cc. It's a, a large American style motorcycles. And um, so that was. Uh, my first career, and then um, my I had I was transferred to um, electric personal mobility um, R and D department, and I was a project manager for this weird electric mobility that is not in the market yet, and will probably never be in the market. Yes. So people blame us for developing toys. <laughs> Essentially, yes, but but we are aiming a really high goal. So. Um, and then uh, I will talk about what we, what I was doing and what my teammates are doing right now, later on today. But um, I was um, not just designing a personal mobility, but we were, we were trying to design a um, business around it or how people use this new mobility. So that's, that's what I've done in Honda. And then after that, I um, changed my career. Um, I went to Tokyo University and I was working on a microsatellite development. I was a project manager for microsatellite development, and I was uh, in charge of uh, different um, ground system and then um, whole system design. And I was with uh, Professor Shirasaka Orseko. Um, we were trying to develop a new uh, microsatellite, which is only a 50 kilogram, kilogram, and it can sit on your table. It's only a 50 centimeter by 50 centimeter and 50 centimeter. It's, a, it's, a, it's a, like a box, okay? it's, a, it's a little big a little bit uh, bigger box than you usually send your stuff to, but it's, it's essentially a box, it's really tiny. And we were trying to uh, develop a methodology to design this new satellite, and also we are trying to expand the business um, possibility of the space use or space utilization. And um, this project is still running, it's, 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 a, it's a great race run by many competitors around, around it. Um, the world, I think the lead um, competitor here right now is a Skybox Imaging. Who knows Skybox Imaging? Okay, okay, SDMP plan, maybe you're geek enough to know. <laughs> right, Skybox Imaging is a company, the, the venture company who was bought by a Google a couple months ago. Yes. Was it 50 million or how many yen? A lot of dollars. <laughs> yes. A lot of dollars. So, it's, it's actually taken off. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's actually, this business is happening. So my engineering background is, is really solid. I mean, I, I have designed mechanical, engine mechanical designs. And I also designed electric mobility. I also designed a satellite. But not only designing things, but I had to design the businesses and what will happen around these things. So that brings me to KOSDM teaching design projects, teaching course like this. And then also, um, I have a class in systems engineering. We do a lot of research with uh, many different companies around Japan on uh, systems engineering. I will, we will talk about a little bit about systems engineering uh, today and then more on the next second day of the, of the program. And then, of course, um, I, I own a company, and 
I'm a partner of another company, so I have uh, two companies um, of all of my relation. And then, um, yes, I do a lot of things outside of um, academia as well. All right, and I will be the lead instructor for the KOH program. Just call me Kane. Right, yes, our satellite is now in orbit. It was launched in March 24th, no, no, May 24th. It's, it's out there, and it's quite exciting. Yes, mm -hmm. great, yes, me too.
I started my uh, career at the uh, car company, Mercedes Benz, and uh, I did uh, management consulting for car dealers for eight years, and quit, somehow quit the job, and got a uh, huge amount of borrowing from banks with high interest rate, <laughs> and get, went into uh, the United States to get an MBA degree from uh, Dartmouth College, and went back to Japan and worked for Accenture as a management consultant, and quit Accenture somehow, and got uh, another uh, huge amount of borrowing from banks, slightly uh, low amount of interest rates, <laughs> <laughs> and started my own uh, consulting company, and working for a private equity fund for uh, turning around that big uh, struggling company. And uh, at the Tableware uh, production company, I was working for that company as a uh, management, managing director. And at them, uh, I uh, developed new business with new product, with new uh, services and brand. So for also, I will explain about it a little bit on the third, third day. And uh, based on that experience, I, together with Hagosan, Hagosan is uh, another lecturer from the design side, design background. Uh, he's not in here, but he will be here. Uh, we wrote this design management. Any of you have read this? I believe this oh thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> uh, this is the book for you guys, I believe it. And this is very uh, uh, essential but very uh, useful for, for you guys. And uh, well welcome to H program. Uh, I think the uh, inside classroom discussion, not discussion, inside classroom lecture, giving lecture is not so important for that. Discussing with your teammates and discussing with your lecturers throughout the program and outside of the classroom and after this program is far more important for you guys, right? So I so, so, excited about the, uh, discussing with you guys inside here and in the past. <laughs> <laughs> Not the past for us, okay? Thank you for coming.
working together with Japan. And I heard the, uh, his issues regarding space. So I have almost 30 years background in space related activities. And not only the designing the satellite, but also the public relations or uh, business enhancement. So just only uh, the space issues, but I have so many point of view regarding one domain. This is my characteristics. And now I started to work in this Keio University just last April. Now I don't have um, long experience in university. But before that, I used to teach systems engineering in my company. So I have some technical background in systems engineering. So anyway, so I hope you should enjoy the three days. And I don't have any lectures in front of you, but I will walk you through the table and take so many pictures. So please don't hesitate. for the, the people who have 
graduated from Cato University working at Los Angeles. Okay. <laughs> so um, we, we were trying, um, and then Jafar thought, Jafar, we were trying to have connections with the people actually working in Jakarta or other uh, area in Asian countries. Actually, last night, uh, the, the Mitakai was for the ASEAN countries. ASEAN Mitakai is called ASEAN Mitakai. And all the, yeah, we have ASEAN <laughs> All the um, Mitakai from not only Jakarta, but uh, Singapore, uh, Thailand, many other, other Asian countries uh, together. And also, uh, many people actually came from Japan. <laughs> so we had a uh, connected connection with many local uh, people, big local um, companies that have many people, local people, actually working for that companies. And in that way, we were trying to uh, connect with the you know, good candidate, candidates to this program. Um, my uh, main main work here as a in this project is to engage in the discussion of the plain English, as he had explained in that uh, uh, interview like three minutes ago. I I have um, studied uh, plain English. Um, do you know Kelly? He's a, a teacher. English writing, and I think he is the most and the best teacher, Japanese teacher, right, for the English writing, because he has uh, wrote more than 50 books for the English writing. And I studied plain English, and uh, here I think I'm going to um, give some kind of support to, to make your ideas deliver clearly and especially the presentation, and the, so that it can be an outstanding tease in the forum that's gonna be, that's gonna be held in, in March next year. And also, um, people call me COO, meaning Chief Okasan Officer. <laughs> So you can call me, uh, oh, my, my name is Kyoko Watanabe, <laughs> and you can call me uh, Kyoko or CEO or whatever you want to call <laughs> So that's all for the presentation, and, and I hope you all enjoy this program. Thank you very much. And we have um, several TAs helping this class, right? Um, where is my TA? Here's one. <laughs> okay, Hirose san, or Tsuyo Kon. He's a first year student at uh, SEM. And we have Suja, another um, master's first year student. And we have Nanja, who were once bit by Habuk. <laughs> <laughs> so ask him about this story. It's crazy. <laughs> Went to Okinawa and Habu bit him. <laughs> he survived. <laughs> it's no joke. So yeah. yeah, let's talk to him. All right, so now it's your turn. All right. I want you are in the in the table of um, several people, and I want you to introduce yourself. To, you already probably did, so but I would like you to try to introduce your, yourself again. And then please let's have a nickname because it, that way it's, it's more easy. Because we have a quite a variety of, of ages and um, background and then discipline, so it's it's nice to have a um, nickname so that we can talk flat. And um, if if possible. Tell your team about one innovative solution that you have encountered recently, okay? Any kind, a product, service, strategy, management style, whatever, okay? And if you don't have any, then say, I don't have any, that's okay. And after you've introduced yourself, please give your, na your, your team an awesome name, okay? It's gotta be awesome. All right, so please give your name, give a team an uh, awesome name. All right, so I'll give you about 15 minutes. I think that, that, that'll be a plenty. Um, so don't talk too much. <laughs> a minute or two uh, per person is just enough. And then please come up with some awesome name for your innovative team. All right? 
Okay, now um, I'm gonna set up the timer so that you can keep track of the uh, track of the time. All right, you can start.
uh, backgrounds, five backgrounds. So please guess our name. But our for hints. For hints. Hint. 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 <laughs> First, we have our international backgrounds. Right? Yeah, we are very flexible. Any uh, background is okay, everything is okay. So we are team, so that's why we should mix This is a very tough work, so we need energy and this can make our food and be happy. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody, Anybody can think of the <laughs> 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 Cha, pao. Cha, pao. <laughs> <laughs> and cha, why is it international? <laughs> like uh, we can mix every, every ingredients in, in meat, rice, egg, yeah. ah. and it, it's not from it's uh, Japan. We we customize the cha yeah. not like the China one. Yes. And, and in Thailand, we also have the Thai version of cha too. Nice. And so it's kind of um, it's available in many countries, uh -huh. and it comes from. <laughs> Welcome in many countries. Okay. And okay. it's baked in Asia countries. I see. I see. All right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, our team name. Uh, Sarah. 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 S
But I think we can phrase it like this. The design thinking, the essential, essential of the design thinking is such. And this is my understanding. But this is very familiar with us Asian people, I guess. I think I, I used to, I grew up in the United States and I had an education. I went to elementary school in the United States. I went to, um, bat I got my bachelor's degree in the United States. But I, I, when I, whenever I see a um, text like this, I always, rem it re always reminds me of Asian people because I think Asian people in general are empathetic in general compared to many of my non-Asian friends. And then I think um, many Asian people are more focused on the, the values, not on the, not, it's, a, it's not money-wise value, it, but, the, but the essential values, like such as like family values and friendship values and things like this. So I think design thinking has a lot in common with Asian culture and Asian background. So that's how I think. And another um, approach we're talking about is system thinking or systems engineering to be specific. Because like you heard from us, Shirazaka sensei and Yoki sensei and myself are um, system engineers who develops large and complex systems such as satellite or um, electric vehicles. And we do it with certain approach. And so this is how I put it, my systems engineering or system thinking understanding. It's about understanding the elements and also how they are interrelated and behave as a system, okay? So there's uh, one great phrase that I love about system. The collection is not a system. If you collect the parts, th it does not become a system. You have to design your system as a system. So this is what I really like about system thinking. You need to design as a system to have a system. You cannot just ha you know bring a bunch of parts together and call it system. It won't work like that. Did you see the um, animated movie of talking about systems engineering? He, um, it has analogy to the human body. Yeah, you saw that movie? Yes, I think that, that, that is essential. Human body, if you, take, if you just tweak a small part of human body, it won't work as a human body. Human will die, right? It works as a har in a harmony and in, in it behaves as a system. You cannot miss any element in that. So I think that's a, the really essential of how you think system, how you approach system. So that's system thinking. And then business synthesis is we're still working on how we, word, how we put this into words, but analytical techniques of businesses and finances are truly powerful when it is combined with synthetical mindset and approaches. So I know many of you have very strong background in um, business or financing, but it's truly powerful when in the context of entrepreneurship when it, it is combined with synthetical mindset. You design from scratch, right? You design from scratch. You're not giving a balance sheet to evaluate, okay? You need to create. You're not giving certain number of customers and you need, you need to calculate how much percentage you can earn from this group of customer, of the pool of customer. You need to think who you want to talk to and who you want to engage to, engage in, okay? So synthetical mindset and approaches are really, really important to make analytical techniques, analytical techniques in businesses and finance even powerful when you work as an entrepreneur, okay? So this is the third aspect that we would like to cover. And I would like to talk a little bit about KOSDM and why we do this and why we're capable of this, why we, we think we are, um, uh, we, 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 we can do this. So KOSDM has strong background in design projects for master students. So we've been running this um, class since 2008, which when we dis, um, established, we, st we started our graduate school in 2008. I think we're the youngest graduate school among um, KO system. And we have been um, running this design project. So this is a pr project-based learning course, um, basically doing what you will be doing, uh, partially. And then we have been in collaboration. We have been in collaboration with Stanford University since 2008 and MIT uh, since 2008. So Stanford people, um, namely uh, Professor Cart Bader, he has been um, giving us, um, providing us with design thinking and more creative thinking approaches. And then, 
MIT, uh, namely Professor Devek, he's been giving us lectures on system thinking, how you can approach um, things as a system. So we were in a close relationship with these two folks from these two prestigious universities in the United States. And also, recently, we have um, another alliance with uh, Adelaide University of Australia. Uh, we have uh, Professor Oki Bosch um, collaborating with us. He's from uh, Adelaide University's Business School. And he has been teaching us how to approach uh, participatory systems approach and things like this. So um, we are um, in a close relationship with international partners. And then we've been running this design project for um, sev seven years so far. And then we, every year, we have about more than 70 students. So now our graduates, or, or the uh, sur we call it survivors, survivors of the design projects, we have more than 450 students. And then who are survivors of SDM design project in this class? Yay, they just survived. <laughs> they just finished last month, right? Did you survive? OK. <laughs> Did you survive? OK, all right. They're, they survived. So they know what it, what it is like. So this is the, the, the little bit of um, design project. So it's, about, it's a six month course run in uh, different um, phases. So the first phase is the learning phase. It, you spend a month in this classroom learning 20, 32 tool, tool sets, I guess, or more. So you will le uh, learn a lot of tool sets. And then another month, we call it active learning phase. Um, you learn the tools, about a little bit more than 30. You use them all, OK? We ask our students to use the, all the tools they learned, no matter if they understood or not, OK? <laughs> you, need, you need this period of time uh, to actually understand what those tools mean, OK? And then here, you, m you get to meet with these proposers. So these are actual, the real companies and organizations which will give us the proposals. So they give us the very real, very um, um, very current um, issues or problems or, or um, their um, goals so that our students can tackle with them. So for example, NEC people gave us um, proposals proposal like this. Hey, we're really good at making sensors. We need to do something with it. What do we do? Very real, right? You're, you will never be given, we have this specific sensor, and we have this much, um, this much capability, and we, are we have a strength in this area and that, and what to do. You will never be given such problem or such um, problem set if you work in a real company. You will never be given. All the problem you need to tackle is ill-defined. You need to define what to solve. You need to define where to go. So all the proposals was um, like that. And then so here you start working with proposals. Um, and But still, you are still in the learning phase. So active learning phase, you try to use all the tools you learn in, in the first phase. Now you're applying all the tools. And then after a month, now you're ready to go. We call it, now you're equipped. You're equipped with the right element or right um, tools, now you're ready to go. So we call it design phase. We, it, it, it spans for four months, and it's a group of about four to six people, and then you tackle the problem. So this is how it's, how it's run. So this is w what it looks like. Okay? It, it was in this room. And these were the, our partners that we um, collaborated with. So um, we've been doing this to, since 2008, and then most of the instructors here in this room are related to um, this design project. And then actually, um, Kyoko-san and Tomita-san and myself are survivors. We survived in 2010. Kyoko-san survived in 2011. So we know what it, what it is like to, um, to do, to run the design project or design um, work. And KOSDM also has a very strong background in systems engineering masters, uh, systems engineering. And we offer a master's degree and PhD um, course here. And we are the nation's only university to provide degree program in systems engineering. Surprising, but it's true. And we need, we, but this is a, this is a problem. We need to solve this issue. We need to expand um, our franchise that we need to have more schools to be teaching this um, when we look at the, the worldwide um, dynamics. However, 
currently we're the only one. And then we offer um, professional trainings of um, system engineering for many companies. For example, JAXA, NEC, uh, Mitsubishi Electric, Honda, Nissan, and more. So we offer um, many professional trainings to um, these companies. And then uh, it, it's not uh, just one or two day course. It, it sometimes expands to um, half year or one year project. So there are so many things that we cannot talk about because of the NDA, but we can probably discuss uh, what we are doing in general. And then these are um, characteristic picture or photograph or drawings that I wanted to show you to, to, to show you what the system engineering is. This is a um, very um, interesting project called F6, fractionated six, or F stands for different things. But this is a project um, proposed by uh, DARPA. DARPA is the US um, defense um, research institute who does crazy robotics. Do you know a uh, big dog? Yeah, it's a type. Type it in Google. You'll you'll creep out probably because it's just crazy robot that runs around just like a a living animal. It's it's crazy. So DARPA is a the leading edge um, research institute that does crazy research like uh, space systems, robotics, autonomous control, and things like this. And this is one of their project. So. When you say satellite, satellite has different functionality um, s built in one piece, right? That's the that's norm. That's the usual. But they said, hey, why not we separate that functionality into smaller pieces and then fly them together in a formation so that it will act as a large satellite, as a group. Who have read the story called Suimi when they were little kid in school? Suimi. Suimi, kokugo no kyokashi yomi mashita ka? Are, are. Yes, so that's the, the best explanation I can think of. And <laughs> this is um, another slide from um, the conference that we always attend. It's called INCOSA International Council on Systems Engineering. Um, this is how you develop a large dynamic system. So this is a slide from Ford, how they uh, interact with their system of interest, which is a car. Now car has more ECU or computers than ever. And surprisingly, if you count the number of computers on the car, on board, it counts. At, it adds up more than hundred now. It's hundred. So the number of these ECU or computers on the on board on the cars is almost equivalent to the rockets or the space shuttles. So now car has become so complicated, and it's now even communicating outside. It's network centric. So we need new engineering to engage such complex system design. So. Now Ford and many other companies in Europe as well, they're engaging the system engineering. So it, it is about designing a complex system. It is about executing the development of this complex system. So this is the essence, essential of the system engineering. But don't, don't worry, you will not do systems engineering, but you will think like a system engineer, okay? Which will, which will benefit you, which will benefit you when you're trying to come up with innovative solution and when you are trying to actually develop your innovative solution. So please look forward to that. And then we have a strong background also in entrepreneurship design. And then this is a class um, taught by Hashiguchi-san and Tomitan, um, entrepreneurship design theory class. And MBA type methods and tools are taught so they are more useful in case for startup businesses. So that's what the course is designed for. And many faculty members and also students are startup founders and company CEOs, okay? You'll, you will surprise how many CEOs we have. Okay, let's see hands. Who are CEOs? Doi Kun, you are, are your CEOs, right? Okay, co-founder, raise your hand. See, these are the co-founders and CEOs. All right, thank you very much, thank you very much. So, um, it's not a big deal. You only need 10,000 yen to become CEO, right? Yes, it's, it's easy. <laughs> but but there, there you need some strategy. So we have been teaching this class since when? Tomita-san, since two years ago? It's a relatively new class, right? Yes. And then um, we will um, uh, convert this into a um, global entrepreneur or uh, entrepreneur in a, in a global context. Um, um, manner, and then we will teach some of some part of this um, class um, in the edge program. 
So those are three things that you will be doing for the um, uh, K, uh, KO Edge program. And okay, here are some um, common approach that you need to keep in mind when you, whenever you do design thinking, system thinking, or business synthesis, or or any other thinkings or any other doings. Okay, you need to think innovative, and then you need to be thinking convergent or divergent thinking, and then you want to focus on insight. Okay, this is quite important. I will uh, repeat this throughout today, uh, but I will uh, go uh, one by one. So think innovative. I've been we've been talking about this all day um, since this morning, but out of the box, okay, you need to go out of the box. But to go outside a box, you need to know where the box is. Yeah, it's, 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 it sounds like a riddle, but you need to know where the box is. Because otherwise, you're just saying crazy stuff, all right? And an expert can come up and say, hey, I know that already. You're not out of the box. You're like way in the box, right? So you need to understand where the box is. So where, where the people's bias is, where the people's normal ideas are, okay? And you want to find that first to get outside of the box. So this is more, uh, more of a, no offense to anybody, but if you're a genius, you don't have to think about it because you're already out of the box, right? And if you're a genius, you're probably not here because you know what to do, right? You're here because you're not quite genius. You want to learn some approach, right? So this, I think, I hope I can share that with you. I'm not a genius, but I learned some techniques. I learned some mindset to compete with these crazy idea geniuses, okay? And then one thing that I learned personally myself is that, you need okay, I'm good at finding box. I'm good. Because I've been in a box for almost like 20 whatever years. And I recently I learned how to find a box. Once I find a box, I know the way out. Okay? So that's the strategy. That's the strategy. So out of the box, you know, it's, it's often said, it's, it's been told so many times, and you know this already. But it's rare to, to know that you need to know the box before you go out of box. Okay? Maybe I should cover this in Japanese as well. But I know, you 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 それをですね、まあ、何らか方法を持ってやっていこうというのがまあこれのアプローチだなと思ってください。And so we're not when you think when you try to think innovative, innovatively, you're not just looking for a crazy idea or eccentric idea, right? You want the idea it may sound crazy, but also new and valuable. This is also important, okay? You are not contemporary artist, okay? You're not Okamoto Taro, right? People may admire you as artists, but we're talking about creating a new thing and trying to spread. Okay? Well, I'm not offending any artist, but we're talking about making someone's life better or someone's um, life easier. So, yes, crazy ideas are welcome, but it has to be new and valuable. So, let's try to focus on that always, always. Like, I, whether you are in the design thinking mode, whether you're in the system thinking mode, whether whether you are in the business synthesis mode, you always need to keep on keep um, thinking innovatively, okay? And then divergent, convergent thinking. We will talk about a little bit more about this in uh, this afternoon. But when you're divergent thinking, diverge, what it has sunk, divergent thinking, you are exploring and expanding the solution space, okay? So it's again like think about the box, okay? That's your solution space, normal solution space. You want to expand from that. So that's a divergent thinking. You want to explore more options, more options, okay? And then 
Convergent thinking, shūsoku. Convergent thinking is you organize or you focus to find the way out of the box. So once you expand or explore, you have so many things. You know, so many things, it's, it's chaotic. Sometimes it's out of order. And you want to find the way to organize it or way to focus it so that you know the way out of the box, okay? So it's a combination of expanding or exploring and then organizing or structuralizing and focus, all right? So this is the, this two, two comes in pair sometimes. It, it's not necessarily sequential. It's not about diversion and conversion, conversion and diversion. It's not like that. You can go diverge, diverge, diverge. And maybe like two days later, you can converge. That's okay. But conceptually, it comes in set, right? Because if you just diverge, then you're again, Okamoto Taro, probably. I'm no offense, but <laughs> it gets nowhere, probably. So it's, it comes in pairs. And then insight. Again, we will talk about this a lot I this afternoon. So this is the one of the most difficult English term that hardly translated to any good Japanese. We ha we've been looking for good Japanese translation, the direct translation of insight, but we always failed. We looked into Buddhism. No, no luck. Yes, there are so many crazy words that may be suitable, but sounds crazy. So. We didn't, we didn't ado adopt that. But he here is my, my explanation. So insight is, in Japanese, it could be translated as kizuki or dōsatsu, right? But when you're in the design process, and then when you are talking about insight within the design process, it's not just regular kizuki or regular um, dōsatsu. It's a, it's a great kizuki that drives your solution, right? drives your team or yourself towards the goal, all right? So yes, you will have a lot of kizuki here and there, but there, there are not so many insights that will actually drive you towards the goal, the final solution. So maybe if you read the, the book, Creative Confidence, there, there, there are so many insights appears in different pages. So I think they use the insight a little bit differently. Li like I explained, it is a very important kizuki or insight that will drive your um, design process or that, that will drive your team towards the goal, okay? And then here, this is just a proposal. This is not a final, but here I think this is a good way to find a good insight. Your good insight is usually unusual. It looks unusual at the first glance, but interesting, okay? You go, what? But when you take another moment, it, sound, it, it, it looks really interesting. So that, that's, I think that's a good insight or important insight. And another case is that your insight, good insight or different insight that may um, lead you to innovative option or innovative solution are unfamiliar at first glance. It doesn't look familiar at first, but when you take a second thought or, you know, you think a little bit deeper, but it's convincing, okay? I don't know how many people agree on this, but this is how I feel from my personal experience. And then it depends. Like, it, it, it really differs because I have certain knowledge. I have certain domain background, right? So something may be very unusual for me, but it may be very familiar or un for usual for, for you. So it's all relative, it's all relative. But think about you're working in a diverge, diverge, um, diversity team. Your team want to find something unusual, but interesting, right? You want, you want to follow that hint, probably. And think about you're in the diver uh, diversity team, you find something unfamiliar for all of you. But it's still convincing. It, 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 it's telling you some story, the convincing story. You want to follow the hints like these to tackle or to reach to the innovative solution. So follow the insight or look for the insight. Look for the insight and don't look for a great answer, okay? Brainstorming or whatsoever will never give you an answer, but it will give you insight, okay? The field work, prototyping, anything does not give you an answer, does not give you a solution. 
but it will give you different insights. And you pick up them, and then you need to design a solution. You need to get to the final goal, okay? So this is really, really important. So no matter what I'm talking, I, you always need to remind yourself, you need to think innovatively, you need to go outside the box. And to go outside the box, you need to know the box. So you sometimes, um, to, to be able to go outside the box, you need to do a lot of research, a lot of analysis to find where the box is. So this may sound contradictory, but that's how you stra strategically go out of the box, okay? Unless you're a genius. Unless you're a genius. If you're a genius, you're, you're, you're already a step away from the box, so you don't really have to worry about this. But if you think you're just a normal person, then you need to think about the box. And divergent and convergent thinking. When you say thinking, you usually think of convergent, okay? So when you hear a term thinking, you think you um, clarify, right? And you minimize, you structure, and then you organize, and you get less things at the end, right? You start thinking this many things, and you think, 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 and you get this. So this is how you perceive thinking until this moment. But there is a type of thinking called divergent thinking. This is not new. You can find this terminology from a book um, uh, published in 1960s. You can go to um, Pew, uh, Pew, Stuart Pew. Um, there's a total design. It's a great book um, published in 1960s. There is a terminology, the divergent thinking and convergent thinking. So it's not a new concept. It's been there for, for years and years. But there is a type of thinking that's called divergent. You want to explore and expand your solution space. That's really, really important when you want to think innovatively. Okay? So this is um, interrelated. This is not like completely uh, independent. This is inter interdependent. But this is another aspect that I really want you to be thinking. Maybe, so I want you to be able to say, hey, we need to diverge now. Or hey, now it's better we converge, okay? So once, once you get used to it, you don't have to say it out loud. You, you can just do it naturally, just like soccer, right? You don't, have to, you don't have to say, I am shooting or I'm passing, right? But once you pick up playing soccer, you need to practice separately. So that's what you will be doing, think innovative, and divergent conversion. Once you get used to it, you can play um, flawlessly or you can just pl play um, smooth, okay? And then insight. You are not looking for solution or idea. You are looking for insight and good insight. And there's a very big difference between normal findings and insight. You will have a lot of findings, okay? Oh, I found that, I found this. But they're not insight because insight will drive your solution or drive your team, okay? So once you have a collection of findings, you need to be carefully examining which are your insight, okay? So these three concepts are very, very important when we continue our discussion um, later this afternoon, all right? So, wow, I'm on time, great. <laughs> so when we come back from the lunch, um, are we gonna have um, an hour break to have lunch. Uh, we're going to talk about the today's portion, design thinking. So I'm going to talk about the mindset and some um, methodologies or tools, and you will you will be doing more exercise. I'm I'm sorry. This morning was a more of a introduction session that I've been doing a lot of talking, but you will be doing a lot of exercises in the afternoon. Any question so far? Comments? Hungry? <laughs> Good. All right. So oh, let's take a break for an hour. It's a lunch break. And then um, we have uh, the Hiyoshi lunch map. <laughs> right. So for those who are not familiar with um, this area, there's a Hiyoshi lun lunch map. But unfortunately, this is in Japanese. So find your Japanese friend who can read. <laughs> And here we have um, different book, uh, different books uh, we recommend. So there, there is a creative confidence that I recommended you on the on online. 
and some other random books that we like. And um, we can talk about the book if you want to. So um, please find some members of SVM if you are interested in any of the book here. Okay. All right. Let's come back at um, five after one. Five after one in this room. Okay. All right. Have a good lunch.